Hey, what's up, Integrity fam? We are back with a video for our Integrity Academy. And in this video, we are going to have a look one more time at server-side request forgery. And while we have had a look in our last video on how to search SSRF in general, in this one, we're going to look into how we can circumvent some sort of protection that is in place by the application. And as usual, without further ado, let's have a quick look at the application. It's once again provided by Portswigger. And what we do see over here is another web shop. And we are going to have a first look. We're going to activate Burb. We want to capture all the requests. And once we have done that, we start browsing the web app. We click around and we see, for example, a first page over here that offers us a checkbox, a drop down that says Paris, Milan, whatever. We click check the stock, there's 18 units. We hop back and we do see that we got a couple of requests. And we've seen that in the previous video, right? So we are going to have a look at all the requests. If there is any request that contains an interesting URL or something that we could play around with. And while walking over all of that, we don't really find anything until we reach this request. And if we look closely, there is a parameter called stock API. And there's a URL inside that goes to stock.welikeToshop.net. And this is the URL that is used to check for the amount of items that are in stock. You have seen that we got like 18 units. This was the request to get that number. We're going to use that and send it to repeater. We'll send it again. We'll just check if we get another response. Now we have like 410 units in stock. And next up, what we want to do is we go back and we want to try if we can reach internal IP addresses. It's always interesting to check for that because with that, we can reach internal servers that we usually wouldn't have access to. So we're trying 127.001 localhost. We're getting rid of the port here. We just want to go to port 80, which means we don't have to specify it. And we'll just click on send. And what we do see is that the application actually has some sort of protection in place. It says external stock check block for security reasons, which is a pretty nice response. Usually you probably not get something as nice as that, but now that now we know that we have to circumvent that. And I wanna show you something. Let's ping 127.01 localhost. And we see that while doing that, we ping a localhost, right? But what if we ping 127.1? And what we see over here is that this is exactly doing the same. So this is also pinging localhost. And what if we ping localhost by saying, actually by using the string localhost instead of the number, we also get to ping 127.001. And we can use that right now. So let's see if we can use that, I don't know if I want to say feature, but like that functionality to circumvent that protection. We will. Uh, browse to 127.1 and we get not found. So that is different. That's not the protection error message that we got before. So this is this is bringing us one step further. And now what we're gonna do is we're getting rid of the path. We don't wanna browse to product stock check anymore. We wanna browse to test for example, and we see that it's not found. So usually you would once again um, start brute forcing over here, right? You would say, okay, we have obviously found an internal address. Now I'm going to send this to intruder and I'm running like a directory brute force attack to see if there's any directory that I can access. I'm not going to do that in this video for the sake of having a shorter video. I know that admin exists. And right now we're getting this message again, accidental stock check blocked for security reasons. And you're like, ah, we got to do something else to exploit that, to circumvent that protection. So let's go ahead and try to do something with that path. And what we can do is we can encode it. And I want to show you a nifty tool. Go to Extender and get yourself a tool called Hackverter. I already have it installed, which is why it says reinstall on my screen. On your screen, it might say install. So go ahead and do that right now. And then what we can do is we just select admin, the string admin, we right click, and we're going to use Hackverter right now. So let's do that. We go to extensions, there's one called Hackverter, and we're going to say, we wanna encode it. So we're going to encode, and we wanna URL encode 
all of that. All in that case, standing for all characters. And now we're getting we're getting this. It looks a little cryptic, but this is what hack voter is is using to realize okay this is going to be url encoded we're getting the same error message again so you might be wondering right now what was hack voter sending to the application i don't really trust that cryptic uh string over here let's just go once again to our extension right click hack voter and we say convert tags and that is going to do something for you it shows you what has actually been sent and you see the string admin URL encoded right now with percent sixty one percent sixty four whatsoever. So what we are going to do right now is we're encoding this again. So this is a key strategy here. We URL encoded something didn't work. We're URL encoding it again, often called double encoding. And let's see if that works. So now that we have that, I'll just quickly convert to tax again just to make it a little easier to read what we're actually sending. And we're having this super long string, but in the end, this is still standing for admin. We're sending this to the application and voila, 200 OK. So we actually circumvented the protection. There was some sort of blacklist in place and we got around that blacklist. And now we're finding an admin panel. And this is pretty interesting. I mean, admin always sounds pretty cool, right? And we find in line 61 a string, a string that says delete colors. And guess what? That's actually the goal of this challenge. So we're just going ahead and say admin, which is a long string with all the percent characters, slash delete, question mark, and we will say username equals colors. And if everything goes according to plan, we're going to send that and we are getting a positive response by the server. Looking at Web Security Academy, we see that we have sold the lab. How cool is that, right? All right, let me quickly reiterate one more time what we've been doing. So first of all, we looked at our application. We have Burp running. We looked at all the HTTP requests that were going out. In those HTTP requests, we were searching for a URL that is part in, for example, a parameter or in, in, a, in, a, in a request header or something like that. And we found it in a post parameter called stock API. And after that, we were trying to browse through an internal IP address. But at this point, we found that it was actually some sort of protection mechanism in place, which prevented us from exporting the service. But at this point, we were smart and we said, look we can maybe find a way around this blacklist and we used a different representation of localhost with 127.1 instead of 127.001 and sent this to the server and that brought us one step further and we found that this was working next up we had to brute force for an existing directory which in that video we're actually not doing but uh, you get the idea um, and then we saw that we still had an issue. We still got blocked. So there was another protection mechanism in place. And then we used double URL encoding to get around this blacklist, to bypass that. And we actually got access to the admin panel unauthenticated. How cool is that? We managed to exploit the application and we deleted the user called colors. All right. That was it for today. I hope you liked this video. Please give us a like, give us a shout out in the comment section. Let us know what you think about this video and subscribe in the top right corner. And I will talk to you soon.